Hi, you guys. Welcome back to Storytime with Miss K. I love this story. I know I say that all the time. Here we go again. But, wow. Lindsay Maddock wrote Finding Winnie, the true story of the world's most famous bear. Let's find out all about it. I think you guys know who Winnie the Pooh is. Let's find out how he became named that. I love the illustrations here. It looks like the Hundred Acre Wood in Winnie the Pooh. Could you tell me a story? Asked Cole. It's awfully late. It was long past dark and the time to be asleep. What kind of story? You know, a true story. One about a bear? We cuddled up close. I'll do my best, I said. A very long time ago, about a hundred years before you were born, there was a veterinarian who lived in Winnipeg. His name was Harry Colborn. A veterinarian, said Cole. Bear doesn't like vegetables. A veterinarian? It means an animal doctor. I know that, said Cole. That's what I'm going to maybe be when I'm big. If a horse had the hiccups or a cow had a cough, Harry knew how to make them feel just right. Harry's hands were never cold, even in Winnipeg, where the winters are so frosty that icicles grow on the inside of your nose. That was just the kind of doctor he was. But a day came when Harry had to say goodbye to Winnipeg. <clears throat> there was a war far, far away beyond the end of the country and on the other side of the ocean, and he was going to help. He would be caring for the soldiers' horses. Harry rode east on a train full of other soldiers. He leaned his head against the window, watching the land scroll by, wondering what it would be like to be so far from home. The train rolled right through dinner and over the sunset and around 10 o'clock and into a nap and out of the next day until it stopped at a place called White River. Harry decided to stretch his legs. On the train platform was a man on a bench with a baby. A baby, said Cole, annoyed. A baby bear, a cub. Harry stopped. It's not every day that you see a bear cub at a train station. That bear has lost his mother, he thought, and that man must be the trapper who got her. What do trappers do, asked Cole. It's what trappers don't do. They don't raise bears. Raise them? You know, I said, love them. Harry thought for a long time. Then he said to himself, there is something special about that bear. He felt inside his pocket and said, I shouldn't. He paced back and forth and said, oh, I can't. Then his heart made up his mind and he walked up to the trapper and said, I'll give you $20 for the bear. Is $20 a lot? asked Cole. Back then, I said, even more than a lot. Captain Colborn, said the colonel on the train as the little bear sniffed at his knees. We are on a journey of thousands of miles heading into the thick of battle and you propose to bring this dangerous creature? Bear stood straight up on her hind legs as if to salute the colonel. The colonel stopped speaking at once, and then, in quite a different voice, he said, Oh, hello! The men of Harry's regiment squeezed by to have a look. I've decided to name her Winnipeg, Harry told them, so we'll never be far from home. Winnie, for short. They had very long way to travel and they had already gone three or four feet when Winnie grew hungry. What do bears eat? The men wondered. What don't they eat? said Harry. Vegetables, 
Cole reminded me. Winnie ate vegetables, I said. She ate everything except onions. I deserve a lot. They brought her carrots and potatoes and apples and tomatoes and eggs and beans and bread and a tin of fish and some slop in a dish. But Winnie was still hungry. How about dessert, said Harry, holding up a bottle of condensed milk. Taking the treat in her paws, Winnie laid on her back and hummed a happy song as she drank. The men roared. Harry and Winnie gathered with the soldiers from all over Canada in the fields of Valcatir. A whole city of tents had sprung up there. One was a hospital for horses where Harry went to work. Winnie was in the army now. Harry taught her to stand up straight and hold her head high and turn this way and that, just so. Soon she was assigned her own post. Even the colonel agreed that Winnie was a remarkable bear. She might have been the best navigator in the whole army. If you hid something, she could find it. She could. What if it was farther away and farther still? Remarkable, he cried. Looks like they hid at apples and she found them all. In the evening, both of them were too tired to move. When Harry thought about Winnie and the voyage across the ocean, his head said, I shouldn't. His head said, I can't. But his heart made up his mind. Nobody had ever tried to float so many people and animals across the Atlantic before. Thirty ships sailed together carrying about 36,000 men and about 7,500 horses and about one bear named Winnie. When they finally arrived in England, the regiment went to training on the Salisbury Plain where it rained and rained and rained. It's a lot of rain. But Winnie didn't seem to mind. She was the mascot of the 2nd Canadian Infantry Brigade, and she attended her post with vigor. One day, Harry came running while she was doing her exercises in the tent. You'll bring the whole place down, he said with a laugh. She had grown. It was winter when the orders came. The time had come to fight. Winnie posed proudly with the men for pictures to send home to their families. Harry thought for a long time. His head argued one way and then the other, but his heart made up his mind. He went to Winnie and he said in a serious way, There's somewhere we need to go. Winnie brushed the mud off her nose and nuzzled in close. Harry drove all the way to the big city. Here we are, the London Zoo. Harry took a deep breath. Winnie, this is going to be your home for a while, he said. She tilted her head. We're shipping off to France, he explained. I have to take care of horses at the front. He rested her big head against him. She rested her big head against him. I know you want to come, but it's not safe. Winnie's head bowed. Harry's hands were warm as sunshine as usual. There is something you must always remember, Harry said. It's the most important thing, really. Even if we're apart, I'll always love you. You'll always be my bear. Is that the end? That's the end of Harry and Winnie's story, I said. But I don't want it to be over, said Cole. Sometimes, I said, you have to let one story end so the next one can begin. How do you know when that will happen? You don't, I said, which is why you should always carry on. 
Once upon a time, there was a little boy with a stuffed bear. He had his bear ever since he was a baby, but somehow the boy had never found the right name for him. He tried Teddy and Edward and even Big Bear. One day, the boy went to visit the London Zoo with his father, and there was a bear, a real bear, on the terrace there. Right away, the boy thought, there's something special about that bear. Her name was Winnie. They became true friends. The boy was allowed to come right inside her enclosure to play. Once the boy had found Winnie, he knew just what to call his stuffed bear. He named it Winnie the Pooh, and the boy was called Cole, said Cole. His name was Christopher Robin Meline. Christopher Robin would visit Winnie at the zoo, and then he would take his stuffed animal on all sorts of adventures in the wood behind his home. His father, Alan Alexander Meline, wrote books all about them. Harry's Winnie became Winnie the Pooh, and there has never been a more beloved bear. But what about Harry? Cole asked. When Harry visited Winnie at the zoo, he saw how happy she was. She was being raised. She was truly loved. And that was all that he'd ever wanted from the moment that they met at that train station in White River. So, after the war, Harry returned to Winnipeg and his life as an animal doctor. Before long, he was married and he had a son named Fred. And Fred had a daughter named Lorene. And Lorene had a daughter named Lindsay, which is me. And then I had a son. When I saw you, I thought, there is something special about this boy. So I named you after your great, great grandfather, Captain Harry Colborn. I named you Cole. That's me, said Cole in a whisper. That's you. And that's Winnie? Yes, I said, that's Winnie. And it's all true? Sometimes the best stories are, I said. Cole's eyes grew big and he said nothing for a long time. Then he hugged his own bear close and let out a yawn that reached far away and they both turned over and fell asleep. Album. Harry as a young soldier. Harry kept diaries throughout World War I. This was the first diary from 1914, the first year of the war. The diary page from the day Harry found Winnie on August 24th, 1914, he wrote, Bought Bear $20. You can barely see it if you look close right there. Three soldiers with Winnie at her post. Winnie and Harry have what appears to be a laugh and a snack. Harry and his fellow soldiers with their mascot, Winnie. There's the picture they posed for before they went off to war. This picture of Winnie and Harry inspired the statue that now stands in Winnipeg and in London. The statue in Winnipeg was unveiled in 1992. Look at that sweet picture of Winnie. Maybe some of you have seen that statue if you've been to Winnipeg or London or lived there. I would love to see it someday. 
This photo was taken of Winnie and Christopher Robin in 1925 at the zoo after they became friends. Christopher Robin's father, A. A. Miline, watches them play from above. There's her father. There's his father. Christopher Robin uh, is right there playing with Winnie. She was about 10 years old in that picture. This official animal record card shows that Winnie began her stay at the London Zoo on December 9th, 1914. This is the author, Lindsay and Cole, in 2013. We knew there was something special about this boy. The end.